Hey folks, this is Dr. K, and in this video, we're going to look at how to design a shopping cart with a number in it or a number over it. Um, uh, well, actually, we'll explore different things. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself a shopping cart image. One website I like to use somewhere in here. Uh, there's my design folder is SVG SIL. Okay, and I'm just going to type in, and this just has a bunch of SVG images. Shopping cart. And uh, there's the one I use most recently. This is the one I like. Uh, you could use these different things, and uh, you're going to uh, have different types of potentially number placements if you use that. Like if you use a solid black background, you can just place like the number five right on it in white or yellow or something like that. Uh, not in red because red on black is a no-no. Uh, but um, I'm not going to use a solid black. I'm going to use this one here. So I'm going to download the PNG image. And you can see it's got this checkered background, and that usually means that it's transparent. Um, but uh, honestly, I always uh, try to check that. So if I go to Downloads here, uh, let's see, there they are. Uh, here's that shopping cart. I'm going to name it something sensible, like shopping-cart. Okay, uh, always check images you download, even if you think they're uh, transparent. Uh, all you need to do is go into PowerPoint or uh, Keynote if you're on Mac, uh, create a shape or something, and then go ahead and drag and drop that image there. And you can see this is indeed uh, transparent here because you can see the uh, shape behind uh, the shopping cart. Okay, so I don't need to do anything there, but just FYI, if you do run across an image that uh, you thought had a transparent background that doesn't, you can go to a site called remove.bg and it will remove the background of that image, make that transparent uh, essentially, okay? Fortunately, we don't need to do that, uh, but we do need to know that uh, the shopping cart image, uh, we need to put that in our website. So to create the website, I'm just going to create a folder. Okay. Uh, okay, come on, 50 to 44 tutorials okay so here I've got some folders already I'm gonna make a directory named shopping cart uh, okay and uh, I'm gonna open that in VS code Okay, so here is Shopping Cart opened in VS Code. I'm going to create a, before I create an index.html file, I'm just going to create an images folder somewhere where I can put my shopping cart. Uh, so now I'm going to go to uh, the finder. I've got my shopping cart right in there. And I'm going to open up a new window, go to Developer, go to CS5244, Tutorials, and there's my shopping cart, and there's my Images folder. So I'm going to uh, copy this image from Downloads uh, into there, so now it's in my project. All right, so with the Visual Studio Code open, um, and now I should see that shopping cart uh, PNG 
if I click on it, it'll even uh, show it there. It's kind of hard to see probably on the video. Uh, but I'm going to go uh, here, my shopping cart um, project folder, and I'm going to create index.html now. All right, and I have a plugin that allows me to do shortcuts. One of the easiest shortcuts is exclamation point. We'll just create a um, template for HTML page. I'm going to save that. Uh, and I'm going to hit this go live button. That's another plugin for VS Code. And it shows me what's on that HTML page, which is nothing right now. Okay. Uh, but let's get something on it. Um, so uh, I'm in my index HTML. Um, and I want a style section here. All right, this is where my CSS is going to be. And in my body, um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a, a div called cart container. And the cart container is going to contain both my shopping cart image and it's also going to contain uh, my cart count, the number I'm going to place over that image. So let me uh, do that. So the first thing I want to put in here is uh, my shopping cart image. And when I put images here, I like to, you know, well, you want to put the the height and the width uh, in here inside the image tag because that's typically the way that Im image tags work. Uh, I'm, my alt text is going to be shopping cart um, image. Okay. Whoops. Uh, that should have been my source. Okay, my alt text is going to be shopping cart. Okay, let me try that one more time. Um, okay, class container, alt equals uh, shopping cart image. All right, let me back all the way out, up. My class is cart container. My image is, my alt is shopping cart image. Sorry about that. And I want the image and the height. Usually you want it set to whatever the image and the height is. And if I look at developer, if I look at my image here, um, shopping cart, okay, images. Uh, I can see that it's 512 by 402. Okay, so 512 is the width, 402 is the height. So uh, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, 512, 500 by 400 is too big for my shopping cart. Uh, it should be around, you know, 40 pixels or something like that. So what I'm going to do here is... I'm going to make this uh, width of, uh, so the width right now is 512, so I'm going to make it 51, okay? And you don't put pixels in here, it's pixels by default, and uh, for the height, uh, I'm going to make that uh, it's 402, so I'm going to make it 40. Okay, I'm just dividing everything by 10, essentially, and, and rounding. All right, so I'm going to save that. And now, uh, and now I cannot uh, see this. All right, so what's going on here? Um, so what's going on is... Uh, this should not be 
inside of my um, cart container. All right. All right, so I have a cart container. And inside my cart container, I want to put my shopping cart image. Okay. And my source is um, going to be images, shopping cart, PNG. And my alt text is going to be uh, shopping cart image. Okay. And I'm also going to have a uh, a height and width in there and um, you want the height and width you want to keep the aspect ratio typically of the image so if I look at the image here the the width is 512 and the height is 402 okay if I divide both these numbers by 10, I'll have something that looks reasonable. I mean, 512 by 402 would be too too large, okay? So I'm just going to divide these by 10. I'm going to get 51 pixels by 40 pixels, okay? So I want uh, a width of uh, 51. And it's 51 pixels, but when you're inside the image tag you don't you should not put uh, px okay it just uses pixels you just put 51 and then it'll, that's 50 that means 51 pixels so you don't include that and then the height is 40 I'm going to save that uh, and now um, still looks a <laughs> still looks big but that's okay well we'll just work with a, uh, a large image here. Um, for my cart container, just so you can uh, keep track of where it is, remember the cart container contains the shopping cart image and it's going to contain the, the cart count. Um, so for my cart container, I'm going to say cart container uh, I'm going to put a border on this just so uh, we can see where that is. Just going to put a 3 pixel solid red border. Um, okay, I think I know why this looks big is because um, I increased the size of my browser window. So that's normal size. Uh, I am going to make it just a tiny bit uh, larger so that you can see it. Um, okay, so uh, that looks good to me. And that's about the size of the cart I want. Uh, now here's the thing. I'm going to make my cart contain uh, container a little larger. Uh, just because I want a little room to be able to move the uh, the cart count the number around so um, the the cart itself is about 50 by 60 so I'm gonna make the cart container I'm gonna give it a height of 60 by 50 so I'm gonna get uh, a little 10 extra uh, pixels uh, above and beyond the uh, image so cart container I want a width of uh, 60 pixels and I want a height of 50 pixels. Okay, so let's look at that now. All right, and it looks like we've got the uh, 10 pixel uh, buffer there. Um, and it also looks like the cart is all the way to the left and all the way to the top. Uh, of that cart container. I actually want the cart to be all the way to the bottom. I do want it all the way to the left. Okay, um, so that's fine. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to absolutely position this cart relative to the cart container. 
All right. So in order to do that, you need to, well, I'm going to ask you what, what, what we need to do. So one of the things I need to do is I need to make the image, okay, um, I need to make the, the, uh, the image, so I'm going to style that. I need to say that the image is positioned absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to give that absolute positioning. I don't think that will change anything, and it did not. All right. However, um, when you make this absolutely positioned, it's absolutely positioned with respect to its uh, uh, closest positioned ancestor. And the closest positioned ancestor, that means the ancestor with a, uh, a position on it. Um, so I'm going to make this, I said I wanted uh, bottom left. So I'm going to say bottom uh, equals zero. That means align the bottom of the cart image with uh, the bottom of its uh, closest positioned ancestor. And um, it's already moved to the left, but I want to put that in explicitly. Okay, And I'm going to save that. Uh, and look what this did. This moved the cart to the bottom of the page. All right. So uh, if uh, I'm going to ask you to um, please pause the video. Uh, I'm going to give you five seconds to pause the video and see if you can understand, see if you can answer why this card is at the bottom of the page instead of the uh, bottom of this uh, card container. Okay, five seconds starting now. All right, so the answer is that the cart container is not positioned. It does not have a position property. All right. So what we need to do is we need to give it a position of relative. All right. And now, actually, let me get this kind of out of the way so you can see both of these. Uh, the cart is right here. And when I hit save here, because I give, give the, gave the cart container a position of relative, I'm hoping that this cart jumps up here to the bottom left of the uh, cart container. So here we go. We're going to hit save. And that's exactly what it did. Fantastic. Uh, very happy to see that. Um, okay, so one of the things I want to do now is I don't want this cart facing in this direction. Actually, I want to flip this vertically. And how do I flip that vertically? Well, it may or may not be intuitive, but you it's a it's a transformation, okay? And the transformation is a scaling transformation. So um, this is just the image, right? So I'm gonna say transform this cart by scaling it on the x-axis because I want to flip it. Um, sorry, I want to flip it horizontally, okay? And to flip it, scaling it is making it bigger or smaller typically, but there's a little trick you can use to, to flip it horizontally or vertically and just put negative one in here, okay? So I'm going to save it, and let's watch what this cart does when I save it. Look at that. Flips it horizontally. Fantastic. And that's exactly what I want because I want a number here. Um, and uh, I'm going to put this number over the cart. All right. So if I need an, if I'm going to put a number over the cart, I need a number. I'm going to put it in a, uh, a separate div. I'm going to put it right under the image. Okay. I'm going to put div 
and I'm going to give it a class of uh, cart count. And again, this is a, a plugin. You can't write HTML this way. This is a, a plugin called Emmet, and it's just got these abbreviations. Like if you put div.cartCount, it will turn it into uh, div class equals cart count. Okay, so it's very nice actually. Um, and let's put a number in there, like uh, you know, forty-seven or something like that. Okay, so I got the number uh, forty-seven in there, um, and I'm gonna sh just show you something that I don't want you to do. Okay, uh, I want to do this cart count. I want to style this cart count. And I want to make the number, the color of that uh, 47 to be, let's just make it Dodger blue. That's kind of my default highlight color. Um, and I'm going to save that. Uh, and what is wrong with this design? Other than the placement of that 47, what is wrong with this design? And I'll give you five seconds to pause the video and see if you can answer that question. Suppose the 40, okay, let me make this more specific. Suppose the 47 was right on top of this cart, right where it should be, or centered right on the cart. Would that be problematic? And the answer is yes, and I want you to tell me why. Five seconds, starting now. Okay, so the answer is that, look, this is uh, a complex background. It has black and white in it. You put a blue 47 over it, that's going to be hard to read. Okay, you can center it yourself and then look at it and convince yourself that it is difficult to read. But if, if this was a solid black cart, okay, if it didn't have any white here and it was just filled in all the way with black, then I would say it's okay to put the number right inside the cart. But I would also say that still 47, uh, I mean, not 40, not the number, but the, the color uh, Dodger blue would not be appropriate to put on black. So I would say either white or yellow or um, light green or possibly or something like that uh, might be appropriate uh, to put uh, over a black background. But uh, nothing's really appropriate to put over a complex uh, background. So to make this readable, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this number 47 inside of a circle. Okay, and I'm going to give the circle a solid background. Um, and that will kind of allow me to uh, play around with the placement uh, a little more. So how do I put this number in a circle? Okay, I'm inside a div. This is inside a div. So the way you uh, put that number, if it's already inside a div in a circle, is a div is a block element. You can give a width and a height to it. And I'm going to give this a width and a height that are the same. So uh, the cart is what? About 50 by 40. So let's give this a width and a height of 20. Okay, so you want to put it in a square first. Uh, and I am going to put the pixels on it. Okay, so width, height, 20 pixels. You can't see it because it doesn't have a background color. So I'm going to make the background color Dodger Blue. Okay, and I'm going to make the color 
Uh, I'll try white for now. Black might be better, but I'm going to try white. Okay. There I go. So you can see now that there, there's this 47. Uh, it's in a square. Okay. And you can also see that it looks like it's this square is behind the cart. Which is kind of interesting because usually the sibling, I would think the sibling, the younger sibling is going to be uh, in front. Uh, oh, I know why that is. It's because I made gave the cart absolute positioning. So when you give something absolute positioning, it kind of breaks out of the flow. There's this normal flow of things where you have an element and uh, a child element is on top of the parent element and a grandchild element is on top of the child element. So that's the normal flow of things. But as soon as you give something absolute positioning, it breaks out of the flow. So what I want to do is I want to give this cart count absolute positioning also. And remember, absolute positioning is positioned with respect to the first relative ancestor or the first positioned ancestor. So uh, we already made sure that the cart container uh, had uh, relative positioning. So if I just go ahead and make this cart count, give it a position of absolute, okay, it should go over the cart. And that's because I gave it a position of absolute, so th that's also breaking out of the normal flow. But because it's positioned after the cart is positioned, it should be on top of the cart. That's what I would think. Let's try it. Yeah, now it comes on top of the cart. Okay, fantastic. So uh, I gave it a height and a width of 20 pixels. And now I want to put this in a circle. So I made the height and the width the same. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the border radius and give it a border radius of 50%. Uh, and if you don't make this a per perfect square, this is not going to look like a perfect circle. Okay, it's going to look like more of an ellipse. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. Um, and my first impression is, let me just make this a little larger. Oops, not that. I want to make this. My first impression is that this number is too close to the edge of this circle. I want a little bit more um, space than that. I don't know if padding is the right thing to do here. Uh, but uh, because I just want to pad it by uh, a couple pixels. I could always, you know, just make the width and the height like 30 pixels. or even 25. Let me see if I just make it 25, if that makes me happier. Okay, actually that does uh, make me happier. That's, uh, I don't want it, I don't think any bigger than 25 pixels. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, it's still a circle, but then this 47, you can see, is like at the top uh, left. Um, I want it to be centered both vertically and horizontally. So I'm going to say, I'm not going to use position absolute because this is the same element. This is text inside of one div. Okay, So I just want to align the text. Uh, I want to center align the text. So I'm going to say align, uh, no, I'm going to say, sorry, t it's text align. Always forget that. Text align center. Okay, and that kind of aligned it uh, in the center. It looks to me like it's closer to the end than it is the beginning, but I think I'm going to live with that for now. Um, and now I want to vertically uh, center the text. Um, there is an align. Um, 
a line vertical, I believe. Let's see if it, this works. No, a line. I think there is an aligned vertical, but uh, I'm not going to use that anyway. Um, uh, I'm going to do something else which uh, I've had pretty good success for uh, with, um, and that is because this div is 20 pixels high, or 25 pixels high, excuse me, I'm going to make the line uh, separation 25 pixels high also. And that usually centers the text uh, vertically uh, nicely. So I'm going to text align center. That looks OK. Doesn't look great. Uh, but I'm going to put line height. That's what I want. Line height. 25 pixels also and yeah that's looks good that looks really nice actually um, and that even you know made it look better in general okay that even made the text align center look better so I'm very happy with that um, and now you can see now we're gonna play around with the positioning of this cart count okay so uh, did I say that the cart count had absolute positioning uh, yes I did I did right here so I'm gonna uh, you know make it positioned to the bottom left first as kind of a baseline I'm just gonna say bottom zero and left it's really already positioned to the left okay now it's positioned uh, on the bottom left so uh, there's two places I think I'd be happy with this uh, cart count one would be like right on the edge of this cart and I'm gonna, again I'm gonna make this browser window uh, larger just so you can see exactly where uh, this uh, positioning is uh, remember, this is 50 pixels by 40 pixels about. So let's move this maybe up 20 pixels and over 40 pixels to get it right about here. Okay, I, and then this is just, I'm just guessing. So from the bottom, I want to move it up 20 pixels. And from the left, I want to move it uh, 40 pixels. Let's see where that gets us. Okay, so it gets us something close. And if I actually, if I take this, uh, sorry, if I take this uh, red border off, I think that's going to look pretty close uh, to where I want. I'm going to comment out this red border. Yeah, that's pretty good. Some people might think that this looks uh, a little bit large and they might want to bring that font down to 16. Um, I think it's 20. It might already be 16. Um, but I like, you know, you definitely want a readable font size. You don't want to make this uh, font too small. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to say that is uh, a nice cart uh, just for the heck of it I'm gonna move this uh, 47 to the left a little bit so instead of making it um, 40 pixels from the left let's see where it ends up when I make it 20 pixels from the left uh, and that looks nice too actually I, I really like that because it kind of looks like it's halfway in and halfway outside of the cart so, yeah, I'm going to call that a success as far as getting a cart count over a, a cart image using absolute positioning.